What's going on everybody? Boris here at Dear College of Design Studio. Today we're going to do two things. We're going to accomplish creating a Maven project from the command line using an archetype. And we're going to create a Git repository so that we can have versioning and version history on our project in IntelliJ. We're then finally going to push our project to GitHub so that we can share it with others or we can invite others to collaborate on our project with us. All right, so let's jump right in. I have here the command line open, the command prompt. I've got a notepad with what our Maven archetype is going to look like. And if you look online or even in IntelliJ IDEA, you're going to see several examples of Maven archetypes. There's an archetype for pretty much anything that you may want to accomplish. And what this will do is create the project structure for you. It's going to create the directory structure, all the folders, the Java folders, and we're going to see how we can use that within IntelliJ to organize our files and create and add files to our Git repository. So without any more delay, let's jump right in. Here, navigate to a folder of your choice. I've gone to C, Users, and then My Name. We're going to do New Folder, and I'm going to call it Test Web App. It doesn't matter what you call it, just anything really. And then navigate to within here, grab the file path. So we're under C users, my name, test web app. Here in the command line, type in CD to change directory, right click, paste, enter. We have now navigated to this directory, uh, to this folder, the test web app. And what we want to do here is run the Maven archetype command. We're going to type it out so that we can see better what's going on. MVN, the Maven keyword, letting our command prompt know that we're about to execute a Maven uh, goal. Archetype, generate, dash D group ID equals com dot arcology. This is going to sound familiar because we've seen this before in our previous Maven videos. When we learn about the GAV, the group, artifact, and version IDs. So here we're creating a unique ID. Because each domain is unique, we invert it to create the project structure. So www.arcologydesigns.com becomes com.arcologydesigns. So let's do com.arcologydesigns. Space dash D artifact ID. And we're going to see this in the POM file as well. Equals test web app. Here we're just specifying what our project is called. Dash D archetype. Artifact ID equals maven dash archetype dash web app I've added an additional option here in notepad and we're going to do dash D interactive mode equals false and what this will do is prevent Maven from asking us some questions you can leave it out and see what happens it's basically going to prompt you for some input we don't want that since we simply want to create our directory structure for the time being. And now when we press enter, we're going to see the Maven build process. It's going to build Maven stub project. It's generating the sources and it's pulling some of the sources that we need. It's going to add them to our POM file. Now let's check this out down here. We have several parameters that are being created. Parameter, group ID, value, com.arcology designs, the value that we specified. Package name, it's creating our packages, com.arcology designs. Artifact ID, value, test web app, base directory, the directory that we specified. And then value 1.0 snapshot. It was actually, if we did interactive mode, it would have prompted this around this point for some extra input. Build success, 
and we see that a folder showed up here in the test web app folder. Let's explore it. Double click. We see a source directory and a palm.xml file. Let's drill deeper into the source, main, resources, and web app. You can go into resources, nothing there. Web app, web inf, a web XML file. We'll take a look at what this is and what this does later on. An index.jsp page, very important because when we build our project with Maven, within IntelliJ, create a WAR file, a web archive, and post it on WebLogic, this is the page that is going to be hit first. It's basically going to be our hello world of this application. So we come back out here, we have a palm, and let's explore it with Notepad++. Right then, so we've seen this header here. Let's close this out. We've seen this header when we went over the Maven theoretical video, and we see that the version 4.0 is being specified. We have our schema location, model version 4.0, of course, and then the group ID, artifact ID that we specified, Packaging, by default, war. We're creating a web archive because we want to create a web app. The name of our web app. URL of the Apache organization. And then our dependencies. It was nice enough to add JUnit in there for us. And JUnit is a Java testing framework. Uh, if we want to do something like test-driven development or create unit tests for our code. And then build. It's going to build it with this final name, test web app. And then, of course, the closing tags for both the dependencies, the build, and the project. Right then, let's close this out and get back to Maven. And let's back up here one level and go to C, Users, Our Name, Test Web App. And we want to right click here. Now, we've already installed and configured Git on Windows. And remember how we installed both Git GUI and Git Bash. If you haven't seen those steps, check out the video in the description below. And you'll see more details on how to configure Git properly. So once we've installed Git, we can come here and we can come to any folder really, right click and create a Git repository. So let's click on Git GUI. You can use Git Bash. I'm going to use the uh, graphical user interface. And we're going to create a new repository. Click on that. As you can see, our directory is empty, and we want to browse, and we want to browse to our test web app. We want to create the repository. We want to create it one level deep. So we have test web app, test web app again. We'll click on this, and click OK, and let's create it. Right then, very quick, as it was created, as you can see, you find our palm file, our sources, uh, web app index. JSP, Java server pages, and we want to do, drill down now on the test web app folder and find our git folder. There it is. So there's a lot of things in here, configuration, descriptions, you can take a look at it. That is basically git specific information that will allow us to version our files and keep track of them. We don't really want to mess with this. What we want to do now is go to IntelliJ Open IntelliJ. I have a project open already, the one that we looked at last time that is available on GitHub. This time we want to simply click File, Import Project, and we want to find our project file and we want to import it by clicking on the palm.xml file. That way IntelliJ knows that it is a Maven project. And if you're wondering how we know this, we can take a look here. It's telling us that for Eclipse projects, we're looking for a dot .project file, a project or file with a, such an extension. For a Maven project, we're looking for palm.xml. And then, of course, we have Gradle and Flash Builder, but we're interested in Maven. So we're looking for C and then test users, our name, test web app. And here it is, palm.xml. We click on this, we click OK, and several options present themselves to us. We want to keep project files in this directory. So it's going to keep the project format as a .idea directory. As you can see here on the left-hand side, we have a folder called .idea. 
we do not want to add this file to git and we're going to see just in, in a second that it is not being added by default we want to keep it that way what we want to do is add all the other files within our project to our git repository that is available within and IntelliJ is intelligent enough pardon the pun to recognize that we have a git repository available for us in that target directory so we don't want to import maven projects automatically uh, we want to create IntelliJ IDEA modules for aggregator projects and basically take all the default options. And if you want to automatically download sources and documentation, I suppose that's fine. We don't really need this for a small project like this. I want to click Next. It tells us to select a Maven project to import and it recognizes com.arcology designs test web app 1.0 snapshot. We want to open the project structure after import. It's basically going to show us our project settings. We want to click next. It tells us some of the things in the class path where the Java development kit is available. So it asks us to select what we're going to use for Java, right? That's how IntelliJ will know certain things about the Java code that we write. It's able to parse it and tell us what's a class, what's a method declaration, and if we're doing something wrong, It'll give us some tips to stop us. And then let's click next. Project name, project file location. We told it to keep it in the same location. I have a special folder for IntelliJ projects, but for this one, we want to keep it right here. We want to click finish. New project can either be opened in the new window or replace the project in the existing window. We want to open it in the new window. And remember how we told it to open the project structure in the beginning. So we can see the project where we specify the Java development kit or the system development kit 1.7. We can change it here at any time. Project language level, we can click on this. So as you can see, there are several options here and it seems like Java 9 is coming out, Jigsaw Project. That is strange. I'm aware of Java 8 that came out that had Lambda type expressions, type annotations, and we can choose the level of the language that we're going to use. To ensure that we are consistent with maybe existing applications or legacy applications or certain browsers, now you never know, we're going to either select 6 or 7.0 and it basically tells you the main functionality that is available within this version. So 1.3 is plain old Java, then the assert keyword was added in 1.4, the enum keyword, autoboxing and a few other things were added in 5.0, add override and interfaces was added in 6. Let's choose this one, we're going to be using some annotations maybe. Then we can take a look at all the other stuff, artifacts. We'll need to create an artifact for the point to web logic, but that's a video for another time. And let's click OK. And voila, we have our test web app with an a dot idea a specific folder for a project. And you'll see there's some colors going on in here. They're red. This means that it's not being added to our repository. It is being excluded from our version history. And we can right click on this, go to Git about halfway down, and then add. We don't want to do this with any files within the idea directory, but we want to come down and select source. We basically want to add everything under source. So we want to go to Git, add. And we'll see that this will turn green now, or at least it should. Actually, Palm was not within this folder. So what we want to do is click on palm.xml, right click, git, and then add, and it should turn green. If we click away, and we see that it is indeed green, so it is being added to our version repository. All right, we've now accomplished two things. We've created a Maven project, and we've added it to our git repository. We've also made sure to exclude the test web app IML, and the .idea folder because these are IntelliJ specific files and directories that are used for our specific project configuration. And we, also, we only want to give the actual project to others when we share it. So we want to keep track of just those things. As you can see, Palm is now green, everything is fine. Under source and under main, we now want to create our Java directory. And this is a bit tricky, at least for me, it was in the beginning. I wasn't sure uh, how to add a Java file because if you click under any directory, 
and you can't create a package. As you, we see options for HTML, JavaScript, CoffeeScript, um, all kinds of files and directories, but we don't see anything for adding a Java package, for adding a class file, none of those options show up. Not to worry, what we want to do is come under source, main, right click, new, directory, and we want to just call it Java, then OK. Uh, it's asking us add files to Git. We want to add none of those files to Git. Actually, we don't want to add the test web app IML. We don't want to add the artifacts. And we don't want to add, actually, we do want to add the Maven JUnit XML, I believe. Actually, you know what? Let's exclude that for now as well. Just to be safe, we can always add them again later. But again, we want to ignore the test web app IML. Sometimes it might take it a while to ask you. Don't worry if you see this message, just ignore them and click OK. All right, so we created our Java folder. Now we want to create our package structure. Create a new directory, call it com. Remember, we're inverting our domain name here. And then within com, we want to create a new directory called Arcology Designs. Or you can call it whatever you want. I'm just calling it that because the name of our website ArcologyDesigns.com, where we have many sample IT files for you guys. Click OK. And now we want to come under Java and then go all the way down. I think it's the third one up called Mark Directory As. And we're going to see several options. We have source root, test sources root, excluded resources, and so on. We want to mark this as blue, sources root. Later on, we're going to take a look at test cases and JUnit. We're going to be marking this as green. We want to mark it as sources root. Let's click on this. And bam, there it is. It recognizes it as a package and it called it com.arcologydesigns. And it marked this as a blue folder. Now, if we right click on this and click new, we see a Java class, a package, package info.java. Much better. This is the kind of stuff that we're looking for. All right, guys, so let's review. We've created a Git repository by right-clicking on the location of our project. We want to create one and then either creating a GUI or a bash so we can enter in command line arguments. And we've specified the directory of our project and created a Git repository. We've also ran a Maven archetype to create the project structure. And we've imported this project using the pom.xml file into IntelliJ IDEA. You can do the same thing using the integrated development environment of your choice. We've then come into IntelliJ IDEA itself and created our Java source directories and our first package. And what we'll see in the next video is how to create a simple Hello World web application and how to build to WebLogic and also how to push our repository to GitHub from within this project from within IntelliJ IDEA. Thanks for watching everyone. As always, I'll see you next time on our Ecology Designs production.